Hello guys, welcome to my 7th video about hyperbola. I guess this is the last video that I will be making about the hyperbola this time. Um, in this video, I will be discussing to you how to get the equations of the asymptotes of the hyperbola. At first, um, we, will, we will try to understand first the slopes of the asymptotes. Okay, so using the Cartesian coordinate system here, or the rectangular coordinate system, recalling the, the graph that we had, I uh, just took the center there and then the auxiliary rectangle. Of course, when we get the, the asymptotes, we had to take the corners, then we had the asymptote there, the asymptote one. If you may try to analyze the, the slope of this line, remember that slope is rise over run so from the center we will just use the center okay so what will we do here is we use the center we will try to understand the rise over run going to this point okay so what happens is we rise here from this center going to this point and then we run going there to reach this point okay so this is the rising and then this is the running notice that the rising is a if ever we have a vertical transverse axis. Okay, so I'm talking about a vertical transverse axis. Okay. This is A because if the, the transverse axis is vertical, then this will be the whole transverse axis here from this point going to the other end. Of course, the hyperbola now will be opening upwards and downwards. It is possible for some equations, of course. Now, if A is our rising, then our running is actually B. I can say it's B because this, um, this measurement here is just the same with this. And that's B, of course, because this point here will be our call vertex. Okay, so I am not actually considering all the, um, all the things in the hyperbola here since we are only to understand the slope of the asymptote for now so basically our m is just the rise over run as i said so m is equal to a right so this is the rising here a over the running b okay so i hope it's clear then for the other asymptote notice that if we, if we consider the center and then this point as well on the line, so this is still the rising, which is A again, okay? And then the running is negative B. This time, negative B, negative because we are running left. This is positive B here because we are running right. So, the slope of the line or the second asymptote is, again, rise over run. So, this should be A over the negative B. Okay. Or that should be M equals the negative A over B. In general, guys, the slopes of the asymptotes of a hyperbola with vertical transverse axis are positive and negative A over B. Okay. Positive and negative A over B, again, guys, this, this, this will be the slopes. Okay. If the transverse axis is vertical. Now, on the other scenario, actually we do the same here. It's just that we have here a horizontal um, transverse axis, just like what we had in our example in graphing. So of course this will this will be B, okay? Because the transverse axis is expected to be horizontal. Okay, this is only an example. Eh? If we have a horizontal transverse axis, then this is A here, and this will be B. Okay, so the rising is B and the running is A. Again, this is A because this measurement here is just the same as this down. Okay, that's A, or that's half of the transverse axis. Now, talking about the slope, rise over run, then it means M is equal to B over A. It is, it is actually the reciprocal a while ago. Because a while ago, if the, if the transverse axis is vertical, then M is A over B. Okay, but this time we have B over A since the transverse axis is, is considered horizontal. Now for the second asymptote, then 
this is negative a on the other side okay this is the only difference so m rise over run is just equal to b over the negative a or it's negative b over a of course in general the slopes of the asymptotes of a hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis are m equals positive and negative b over a so just remember that if the horror if the transverse axis is vertical then the slopes are positive and negative a over b if it is horizontal then the slopes will be positive and negative b over a so let's apply this concept in our example so continuing the summary this was our um, graph this is a hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis remember okay this is our um, transverse axis and that is horizontal which means the asymptotes will have a slope or slopes positive and negative b over a okay so if it is not clear to you then just replay the video from time to time okay? you have to accept these facts guys it should always be like this if the if the transverse axis is horizontal then the asymptotes are positive and negative b over a if the transverse axis is vertical then you have positive and negative a over b for the slopes then the asymptote one the equation using m equals b over a why positive because asymptote asymptote one is a line slanting upward right okay everything is positive it's the rising over the running right so everything is positive just remember that lines slanting upward right will always have a positive slope the lines slanting upward left will always have the negative slope okay i don't know if you can still remember a equals 3 and b equals 4 okay this was the values in uh, in the first part of the graph i just hope that you still remember this one because this you need to remember these things okay then we can say that the slope is 4 over 3. So actually, all you have to do is to remember this concept of A over B when the transverse axis is vertical and B over A if the transverse axis is horizontal. Then just get the values of A and B, substitute it to, to the formula, and then you will get the specific slope. So this time, we have 4 over 3. By then, we have to use the point-slope form. This is in your junior high school. I hope that you can, you, you can review if you want, okay? I hope that this was tackled. So this is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. This is the um, standard equation of the line. This is one of the standard equations of the line, the point slope form. We can use this equation if we have a point on the line and a slope. Okay, so again, I, let me repeat. We can use this equation if we have a point on the line and a slope for now we already have the slope but we don't have a point on the line okay but it's it's actually easy for this one we can use the center as a point on the line okay why why because notice that the asymptote one is passing through the center which means this point is a point on the line Thus, we can just use the center, okay? We can just maximize the use of the center for us to get the equation of the asymptote. So what do we do next? We will now consider 3 as our x sub 1 and negative 1 as our y sub 1. Y sub 1. And then after that, we will just substitute. Algebraically, this becomes y minus the negative 1, okay? So I am substituting negative 1 to y sub 1 equals m is 4 thirds okay times x minus 3 algebraically this becomes y plus 1 okay so double negation this becomes plus here and then 4 thirds times x minus 3 I just copied after that you will have y plus 1 equals 4 thirds x minus 4 so I just distribute this one distributive property of multiplication over subtraction so 4 thirds times x is 4 thirds x 4 thirds times 3, you can just cancel 3 and then what's left will be 4. Okay, now we have to get rid of the um, of the fraction. 
So what do we do is we will try to remove the, the denominator. So how do we do that? We can just multiply the whole equation by 3. Okay. So what will happen now? This becomes, the equation becomes 3y plus 3 equals 4x minus 12. So what did I do? I just dis distribute 3 to all the to all the terms inside this bracket. So 3 times y is 3y, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 thirds x, you cancel 3, so you have 4x left. And then 3 times 4 is 12. After which, you can just arrange them according to the general equation of the line. If you may remember, that's ax plus by plus c equals 0. Or you can just remember x first and then y first, uh, y after and then the constant. That means the, the term without the variable. So I have to write the, the term with the x variable. Okay. So you will have negative 4x plus 3y plus 3 plus 12 equals 0. Okay. So I just use the additive inverse or it's known as the transpose transposing method here. So you have this um, and then we can just combine 3 and 12. So this becomes negative 4x plus 3y plus 15 equals 0. Okay, so I just bring it down. 3y bring it down. And then 3 plus 12 is 15. Okay. There's a rule in the general equation of the line. I hope that you know this one and I hope that you remembered. This coefficient of x should not be negative so i will try to make this positive okay so how do i do that i'll multiply the whole equation by a negative one so by then the equation of the first asymptote is 4x minus 3y minus 15 equals zero so if you will ask me how did i do it negative one times negative four is positive 4x Negative 1 times 3y is negative 3y, and negative 1 times 15 is negative 15. Of course, negative 1 times 0 is 0. So this is now the general equation of our first slope. Now for the second slope, we can just, or we, we will just actually apply the same, the same method as we used in asymptote 1. But a little change in the slope. This time we have a negative 4 thirds. Okay, so negative four thirds because we have we have this asymptote, which is a straight line, and then it is a straight line slanting upward left. So the slope is always negative. It's actually easy to identify the second slope. Just negate the first slope, and that's it. Okay, so you have negative four thirds. You can we will still be using the point slope form y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. This time, you will have y minus negative 1. The m changes to negative 4 thirds. So the only difference here is in the first asymptote, we have positive 4 thirds. Here in the second, we have negative 4 thirds. Okay. So this changes everything. Be careful. Be careful. Huh? So... You should not underestimate this this part here. You should do it um, um, correctly all the time. Okay. Same methods. So double negation. That's y plus one equals negative four thirds times x minus three. Most of the time, my students um, will miss this sign. So from here, they will still write negative, but then afterwards, they they miss the negative sign. So they will get the same answer, and if we, if it will happen, you will have the same slopes. Then you might have done something wrong. The slopes, I mean, not slopes. You will have the same equations. Then you may have done something wrong. Something wrong. The asymptotes will always be different. The equations of the asymptotes, I mean. Okay, so they can never be the same. Algebraically, this becomes y plus 1 equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. Okay, so this is only distributive property over subtraction. Distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. So negative 4 thirds um, times x here is negative 4 thirds x. Negative 4 thirds times negative 3. Of course, we cancel 3. And then negative negative, so it becomes plus 4. Then we will, sub we will multiply 
the whole equation by 3 to get rid of a denominator. So we will try to remove the fractions. If there are if there if there are more than one fractions or if there are many fractions then you have to multiply the whole equations by its LCD, okay? Or the least common denominator. So distribute 3 to all the terms inside the inside the bracket. This becomes 3y plus 3 equals negative 4x plus 12. It's only algebra. I don't need to discuss it further. And then you will have 4x plus 3y plus 3 minus 12 equals 0. As I said, you have to arrange the terms. x first followed by y and then the constant. Constant is the term without the variable. Then you will combine now 3 and negative 12. So this becomes negative 9. The equation of the second asymptote is therefore 4x plus 3y minus 9 equals 0. There's no need for you to multiply by negative 1 huh? because because the um, the numerical coefficient of x here is already positive. So there's no need to, to change. I mean, there's no need to multiply by negative 1. In asymptote 1, we have to multiply by negative 1. It's necessary because we have to change the sign of this. I mean, we have to we have to make this numerical coefficient positive. Okay, that's, that's necessary. But here, since it's already positive, then do nothing anymore. Just copy it. Okay, so that's for the asymptotes. And that's everything about hyperbola. Maybe we can go to applications later on. That's all for now. Goodbye.